This episode of App Judgment is brought to you by Thrillist. Welcome to App Judgment, your source for mobile application news and reviews. I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Zach Miner. And I'm very excited today because we're talking about my latest obsession. It's a good one today. It's a good one. It's a new game called Cut the Rope. Yes. But it's not really new. Not so new. New for Android. Yes. We reviewed it last year on the iPhone. It's uh, developed by Zepto Lab. Yeah, um, one of the great breakout uh, iPhone game hits. Finally came out on Android a couple weeks ago. Um, I think uh, Graham reviewed it on the iPhone back then. Yeah, day, he right? did, yeah, he did, he did. You Graham can go back and watch that if you yeah. want to see that. But finally it's on Android, and finally. I hadn't heard any of it. And then Mauricio actually emailed me, and he said, hey, check out this new game. It's available on the GetJar app store. Right. Which I thought was interesting. And if you're not aware of what GetJar is, uh, basically with Android, you're not restricted to just the Android marketplace. Amazon launched a, uh, an app marketplace, and now GetJar also is a home for to download Android apps from. Uh, and they had an exclusive rights to cut the rope for one week only. So when it first came out, it was only available in GetJar. Right. Now, by the time you, you're watching this, it should be available in the Amazon Marketplace or the Android Marketplace. But download it from GetJar, and yeah. it's off to the races. It's great. I love when yeah. someone says, download an app, and then I have to think, wait, which Wait, which app store should I go to? That, my friend, is called Choice. Ah, yes. yes. But it was free, and so it's really simple to go on your browser, go to GetGuard. Get GetJar. Get get jar. Get jar. Get jar. <laughs> and download it to your phone, name. install it, and as soon as I installed it, I was hooked. Yeah. I and mean, this game is a lot, a lot of fun. It is one of those games when they talk about people being addicted to like, you know, phone games. You know, yeah. there's Angry Birds, and there's this. It's very much in the Angry Birds model. I mean, like, it's got the 25 Just level at the animation. Like, yeah, the animation is great, but it's got like 25 levels per, um, 25 boards per level, and each level ramps up the difficulty. Right. Um, and basically the premise of the game is that you've got this piece of candy that's hanging on a piece of rope and you've got this little alien or frog or something like that that you need to feed and all you need to do is cut the rope to drop the candy in his mouth. Yeah, uh, and also similar to Angry Birds, it works on kind of a three star scale, right? So one star is good, two stars is better, and then three stars is best. Right, and you want to manipulate the rope and the candy to get, gather those stars and there are other little tools they introduce as the game goes on, like there are bubbles, which we just saw, which allow you to allows float, it to float up, right. defy gravity, right. um, and you can utilize the ropes to manipulate where the candy goes. And what's great about the game is that there's physics to it. Right. So like there's some of the ropes are really tense like rubber bands. So when you cut them, it springs forward. Or um, with the bubble, uh, the bubbles, if you, if you pop the bubble, the candy will drop with the momentum that it has, it, like it's falling in gravity. Right. So, um, so similar to Angry Birds in that it, in that it uses physics to kind of, um, to kind of accomplish break these puzzles. You exactly, know? exactly. And then as the game goes on, so there are about 25 levels per board, and then each board, they call them boxes, um, and each box kind of unlocks a different type of tool or a different kind of toy. Right. Um, the second level, I think, introduces the whoopee cushions or balloons. Right. Um, they, they allow you to kind of blow the... Um, Blow uh, bubbles that have um, you know the candy in them all around the level. Exactly. Right? So you can gain some momentum, get it swinging on the rope, and then when you cut it, you can get some you know much like a swing, you can get some uh, get some momentum behind the candy to have it fly across. Yeah. Um, one of the later to uh, little uh, tools that, that we found that I thought was a lot of fun was on the magic level where there's actually top hats like a magician's top hat that works like a teleporter. Right. So you drop in one hat and it comes out the other one. Which right. That was a lot of fun. And again, using gravity, so when you drop through the hat, it comes out the other end with the same momentum that it had. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, There's even one later on where you can kind of flip the gravity of the level back and forth to try oh, and get to different parts of it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Something yeah. to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, but it, and the thing is, it's incredibly uh, challenging and it's incredibly um, not. I wouldn't say difficult. That's one thing I like about this versus Angry Birds is that it's achievable. Like I, I unlock so many levels by playing it. But then they throw in little curveballs to, to make it harder, to make it frustrating. Sure. And it can be easy to get through a level, but really difficult to get through it with three stars. Exactly. Right? Which I assume we all try and get three stars before moving on. Well, we'll on. talk about that in a moment. But uh, there are other little things yeah. in the game, like uh, they've introduced spiders, which oh, climb God. up the rope, which will eat the candy. Spiders. Yeah, so you gotta cut the rope before the spider gets to the candy. Adds in that time factor. Yeah. And then even more infuriating, they added stars that fade out. Right. So the star has like a timer around it. You can see here that the, the glow is running out. And once the glow runs out, you can't get the star. Oh, so even late. if you wanted to get all three stars, you've got to do it in time. Right. Which is incredibly frustrating. And that gets to kind of the, the what you're saying about completing all the stars. You don't need to get three stars to every level. That's right. the key here. 
And um, for someone like me, I'm less concerned about getting all three stars. I just want to blow through as many levels as possible. Really? Yeah. I See, I try and get through each level, getting all the three stars before I move on. Right. Because I feel like I can't move past the level if I feel like there's still something to be accomplished. I want to get to the end of the game, so I, I'll go back and finish out the three stars. But, but that's I just want totally to get to... cheap. You walk in here bragging about how many levels you've beaten. <laughs> I'm up to like 102. Yeah, but you, you have no stars on half of them. No, only on like three or four. But it's, <laughs> some of them are hard. They're hard. But I don't know, I'm sure we can argue strategy until yeah. the cows come home. We probably should talk about our sponsor. Let's do it. Yeah. So if you haven't heard of Thrillist, Thrillist is much like that one friend who hooked you up with like the cool information, the cool new bands. You're like that to me. You tell me yeah. about the new bands that all the kids are listening to. Now Thrillist can replace me. Exactly. So I'm done with Zach and now I'm on to Thrillist, which is the great place for cool new stuff uh, to do and places to go. Yeah, you want to know about something like a Star Wars burlesque show, maybe a beer garden that screens 80s flick. I like beer, you like 80s flicks. I like you know? 80s movies. Maybe even a new restaurant that has a sushi robot that serves you. I'd like to see neat. that. I would like to see that. <laughs> so then you've got to sign up for Thrillist. It's a free daily email that sifts through all the crap to find the best new bars, restaurants, events, and services, whatever it is, they promise it won't suck. That's right. So hit up Thrillist.com slash AJ, and you'll start getting Thrillist sweet, sweet knowledge right away. So, uh, so one thing about Cut the Rope that I thought was interesting, which I haven't seen. Now, admittedly, I don't play a lot of games mm -hmm. on Android. Um, I'm a casual gamer. But I noticed it had this uh, kind of like pseudo app kind of thing already baked into the game called Score Loop. Right. Which was basically like an Xbox uh, achievement system for mobile games. Yeah, it's kind of like an open faint or uh, iOS's Game Center competitor, right? It allows you to get through achievements. You sign up. You can compare your high scores with friends. Yep. And initially, I didn't like it because it just automatically signed me up and it made me like player number 1876542. Right. Um, but once I started playing the game and I'm unlocking, I'm like, oh, I unlocked the, the, the silver scissors achievement. Like, I have no idea what these are. I wanted to do more, so I kind of got sucked in by the score loop thing. So. Gives you a little pat on the back. Gives you know? a little pat Feels on good. the back. But, um, but yeah, so cut, cut the rope with score loop. It's a great way to play, interact with your friends, get a little competitive. We should hook up on there. Yeah. We do that. But, um, but uh, cut the rope has been a great game. A lot of pros when we're sitting down to look at this game oh, see yeah. why it's so good. Um, mainly, like we said, following the Angry Birds model, they're coming out with new content all the time. They've previously did it. They, they've set the precedence with their iPhone app that they're doing like holiday theme levels. Right. Like There's that. a Valentine's Day box that yep. came out. And so I assume that they're going to do that here. I'm sure. On yeah. Android. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things I love about it is that it's you know it kind of epitomizes quick and casual mobile gaming. You know, you can you're waiting for a bus. You have five minutes. You can whip it out and. Um, you know, get through a couple of levels. Um, and, you know. Whip it out on the bus a lot. Uh, one other great thing is that the, the game installs and runs natively on a tablet perfectly. Um, you don't need to download a different a version of the app or anything like that. You know, here we've got this great tablet. I've got a Zoom at home, and you get a lot more real estate to play. It's a lot more breathing room. It's easier to kind of a, a, a attack the different levels on a tablet. Yeah. So it's also it should be said it's a portrait-oriented device or uh, game. Game. Yeah. I don't know. I use my phone mostly in the portrait mode. It kind of aggravates me when I have to go to like Angry Birds or another game that requires landscape. Yep. It's great to have a good portrait game. Yeah, you know? I, I'm agree with you because it's easier to hold it in one hand, yeah. and if you get a text message or a call, you don't have to tilt it or whatever. Right. Um, and I was actually normally I turned down the sound effects and the music, but I was yeah. really impressed by the sound effects and the music in this game. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, so. Cute. Yeah. yeah. So that said, what's the bad about the game? If well, um, you know, one of the issues that we talked about earlier was sometimes the action can get a little bit hairy, especially when there's spiders climbing everywhere yep. and there are tight ropes and sliders. So sometimes things can get a little too cramped when you're trying to time like a, a slide with a cut. Yeah. You know? It can be difficult, and especially if you've got fat fingers like I do, you don't have a lot of room. That's why like playing on the phone sometimes can be frustrating. Right. But and the other frustrating thing I found was that uh, it seems to be fairly loading, it, like seems to be fairly complex, and so there's some loading time involved. Mm. And so they've got a couple of interstitials and screens that load up, but ultimately like I understand why they do it, but after a while I'm like, oh, another loading screen. I'm right. tired of seeing the word loading. Right. But that's just me. I wonder if that's different on maybe newer phones. You know, maybe this is, Nexus or... S, this is pretty good. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Came out back in January. Well, we'll have to see. Uh, one December. thing to note, like we mentioned, it is free um, in the various app stores, but it is ad supported. So if you're, um, if you notice those little ads along the bottom, if you're an Android user, you're probably used to it by now. Yeah. I'd much rather deal with ads than have to pay for the app. So that's great. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So we we played this on the Nexus S. Yep. Uh, one of the things about GetJar is that you can't tell uh, which devices the game is compatible with. 
So check it out on your device and let us know. But we had no issues on the Nexus House. Right? So what do you say? Download? Absolutely download. Absolutely yeah. download. One of my favorite games. Yeah. I can't wait to see more from the Cut the Rope franchise. Maybe even a Connect version. In that'd, the be cool. that'd be cool. That'd be Connect Feud That'd Nintra. be so cool. Why not Connect Cut the Rope? Yeah, right? That'd be very cool. So okay. if you're playing Cut the Rope and you dig it, uh, email us at uh, appjudgment at revision3.com. Or if you found a phone that doesn't work on, let us know so we can spread the word. Um, and you can follow us out on the web, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Or, as always, go check out previous episodes at revision3.com slash abjudgment. Yep. That's it for now. See you next time.